What if a single archaeological site proved that ancient engineers mastered material science centuries before the modern era? For decades, the pristine condition of the terracotta army's weaponry was attributed to a lost technology, chrome plating, a technique not officially patented until 1924. Excavations recovered bronze swords that remained sharp enough to slice through paper after 2,200 years in the earth. However, in 2019, research published in Nature overturned this theory. The preservation was not the result of a mid-20th century coating, but a consequence of a calculated material synergy between the bronze, the lacquer and the soil itself. The Terracotta Army stands as the pinnacle of ancient systems engineering, from quantum level magnetism hidden in synthetic pigments to industrial quality control sustained through absolute liability. These findings suggest that the mausoleum of the first emperor was not merely a tomb, but a massive industrial experiment. The evidence reveals a civilization that had mastered the complexities of environmental chemistry and mass production long before the arrival of the machine age. This is the forensic record of an ancient industrial superpower. Let's start with the mystery that fooled scientists for 40 years, the chrome-plated weapons. When archaeologists first examined these bronze weapons under electron microscopes, they found something impossible. Chromium traces on the surface. Chromium-based anti-corrosion coatings weren't developed until the 1920s. The discovery seemed to rewrite history. Here was proof that ancient Chinese metallurgists had mastered electrochemical processes 1,700 years earlier than rest. For decades, this seemed like proof of impossible ancient technology. Museums displayed these weapons as evidence of lost advanced civilizations. Popular science documentaries proclaimed the Qin Dynasty had invented chrome plating. But the 2019 nature study by Martinon Torres and his international team changed everything. They analysed 464 weapons using advanced spectroscopy techniques. What they found was both humbling and fascinating. Here's what actually happened. The chromium wasn't deliberate coating. It was contamination from lacquer applied to wooden weapon handles. The lacquer contained chromite, a naturally occurring chromium-bearing mineral used as a pigment. Over 2,200 years, the wood decayed, leaving chromium residue on adjacent bronze surfaces as post-depositional contamination. The mechanism was geological, not technological. Now here's where it gets fascinating. The real preservation miracle wasn't the chromium, but the metallurgical precision of the bronze itself. The Qin engineers used high tin bronze alloys with tin content between 13 to 18 percent. This exact composition creates natural corrosion resistance through the formation of protective tin-rich surface layers. Combined with the moderately alkaline pH of Xi'an soil between 7.5 and 8.2, this created perfect preservation conditions. Look at these scanning electron microscope images you can see identical sharpening marks across thousands of arrowheads. The striations are perfectly parallel, indicating systematic sharpening techniques applied with remarkable consistency. They were combat ready, manufactured to surgical precision, not a ceremonial weapon. Metallurgical analysis shows the bronze composition was optimized for both hardness and corrosion resistance. The miracle wasn't impossible ancient chrome plating. It was calculated material science that worked exactly as designed for over two millennia. The Qin engineers understood something we're only now appreciating, that the right alloy composition combined with environmental chemistry could achieve preservation that surpasses many modern techniques. Now let's talk about the most mind-blowing discovery hidden in plain sight, Han Purple. This synthetic pigment, barium copper silicate, decorates many of the warriors. Synthesizing the compound required heating raw minerals to temperatures exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius with exact precision. Here's the engineering challenge that modern chemists struggled to solve. Barium has an extremely high melting point of 727 degrees Celsius, but barium compounds require even higher temperatures to react properly. 
To synthesize Han purple, ancient alchemists had to use lead as a flux catalyst, reducing the effective melting point and enabling the chemical reaction. This is advanced chemical engineering, requiring precise temperature control, material ratios, and understanding of phase transitions. One degree too low and the reaction fails, too high and the compounds decompose. The terracotta warriors show hand purple at 95% purity. To put this in perspective, typical Han dynasty examples show only 30% purity. Modern scientists only achieved 100% pure synthesis in 2024, using electron microscopy technology to observe nucleation and crystal growth at the atomic scale. Beyond the chemistry of the paint lies a phenomenon that bridges ancient alchemy with modern theoretical physics. In 2006, physicists at Stanford and Los Alamos examined Han purple under extreme conditions. When the pigment is cooled to near absolute zero and subjected to a high intensity magnetic field, it undergoes a process known as quantum dimensional reduction. In most materials, magnetic waves propagate in three dimensions. But within the specific crystalline lattice of this ancient pigment, the vertical component of these waves effectively vanishes. The magnetic structure collapses from a three-dimensional state into two-dimensional ripples, a state physicists call the quantum critical point. Until this discovery, such a dimensional collapse existed only in mathematical equations. Han Purple provided the first laboratory environment where scientists could observe this behavior in a physical material. It reveals a surprising connection to the technology of the future. The magnetic properties observed in this 2,000-year-old pigment are identical to those found in high-temperature superconductors and exotic quantum materials. The alchemists of the Qin dynasty were not looking for quantum critical magnetism. They were seeking a vibrant, synthetic purple for the emperor's immortal army. Yet, in their pursuit of the perfect pigment, they accidentally engineered a material that would, two millennia later, become a primary tool for understanding the deepest mysteries of condensed matter physics. Let's examine the manufacturing system that created 8,000 unique warriors from standardized components. This wasn't a single assembly line. It was cellular manufacturing, independent workshops working simultaneously while maintaining identical quality standards. This organizational structure wouldn't be formally recognized in Western manufacturing until Toyota developed lean production principles in the 1950s. The engineers used exactly eight head molds, multiple arm positions, various leg stances, and different torso configurations. By combining these standardized parts, they created thousands of unique variations. Mathematical analysis shows over 7,000 possible combinations from the basic component set. This is object-oriented programming, 2,000 years before computers. Standardized components plus flexible combination rules equals infinite variation from finite inputs. Modern software architects recognize this design pattern instantly. But the real engineering marvel was the coordination system. Archaeological evidence shows approximately 90 master foremen, each supervising 8 to 10 skilled workers. These cellular production units could manufacture different figure types, archers, cavalry, generals, chariots, while maintaining perfect dimensional accuracy. The logistics are breathtaking. Raw materials had to be sourced from multiple locations. Clay from local deposits, tin from mines hundreds of kilometers away, copper from even more distant sources, all coordinated to arrive at production sites in precise quantities and timing. Quality control was embedded at every level. Dimensional analysis of completed figures shows tolerances within two to three millimeters across thousands of warriors. This level of precision required standardized measuring tools, training protocols and inspection procedures. The precision is staggering. Every warrior fits together perfectly. Every weapon matches its holder's grip specifications. Every piece of armor aligns with mathematical accuracy. 
Joint analysis shows consistent angles and proportions that indicate the use of geometric templates and measuring devices. This level of coordination required logistics planning that wouldn't be seen again until 20th century lean manufacturing principles. The Qin engineers had essentially created a distributed manufacturing network with real-time quality control and just-in-time delivery systems. The precision of this industrial system was not merely a feat of engineering, but a product of a brutal legal framework. Archaeologists have identified over 450 individual signatures and stamps across the weapons and figures. These inscriptions reveal a rigid three-tier hierarchy. At the base were the labourers and artisans. Above them, a layer of more than 90 foremen. And at the apex, state officials reporting directly to the imperial court. In the Qin legalist system, these were not signatures of pride, but markers of accountability. Under the prevailing law, the distinction between a manufacturing defect and a capital crime was non-existent. Substandard workmanship could result in the execution of the worker and their entire extended family, a principle of collective punishment designed to ensure a zero failure rate. The physical toll of this system is recorded in the labourers' cemeteries surrounding the mausoleum. Skeletal remains found at the site show extensive evidence of degenerative joint disease, compressed vertebrae and stress fractures. The forensic signature of a life spent in repetitive, high-intensity labour. Some were buried with simple ceramic tablets, often referred to as epitaphs of the enslaved, which served as final personnel records for those who died in service to the emperor. This 0.01% defect rate was not achieved through advanced machinery, but through a system of absolute liability. By making the workers' family the collateral for their performance, the Qin state created an environment where precision was a matter of survival. It is a sobering lesson in systems engineering that statistical perfection can be achieved through human organisation, provided the cost of failure is high enough. Finally, let's examine the most sophisticated aspect of this entire project, the preservation system. The tomb's location wasn't chosen randomly. It was selected for specific soil chemistry that would create optimal preservation conditions. Geological surveys show the site was chosen from among dozens of potential locations based on subsurface mineral composition. The soil composition shows moderately alkaline pH between 7.5 and 8.2, small particle size averaging 0.02 to 0.05 millimetres, low organic content below 2%, and precise mineral ratios including quartz, feldspar and clay minerals in specific proportions. This created a preservation matrix protecting bronze, clay and organic materials for over two millennia. Modern accelerated ageing experiments prove this combination is nearly impossible to achieve by accident. When scientists replicated these soil conditions in laboratory tests, burying bronze samples in controlled environments, they achieved identical preservation results. The correlation is so precise, it can only be intentional design. But here's what makes this truly extraordinary. The scale of environmental engineering involved. The entire 56 square kilometre complex was designed as a massive chemical preservation system. Drainage patterns were engineered to maintain optimal moisture levels. Soil composition was modified through the addition of specific minerals. Chamber ventilation was designed to prevent condensation while maintaining stable humidity. The ancient engineers understood corrosion chemistry so precisely they created a natural preservation laboratory. They knew alkaline conditions would prevent bronze oxidation through the formation of protective oxide layers. They knew specific clay minerals would maintain structural integrity by preventing expansion and contraction cycles. They knew controlled moisture levels would prevent organic decay while avoiding desiccation damage. Chemical analysis reveals that the soil wasn't just naturally occurring, it was engineered. Trace element analysis shows the addition of specific minerals 
not found in the local geology. The preservation environment was as carefully designed as the warriors themselves. This isn't just tomb construction. This is environmental chemistry applied at architectural scale. The Chin engineers essentially created a 2,200 year long controlled experiment in materials preservation and it worked exactly as designed. The Terracotta Army is more than a funerary monument. It is the forensic record of an integrated industrial system. It proves that 2,200 years ago, the Chin engineers had already solved the fundamental challenges of mass production, modular design, metallurgical precision, and environmental chemistry. From the accidental creation of quantum critical materials, to a quality control system enforced by absolute liability. These were not primitive craftsmen, but systematic engineers. They created solutions that modern science is still reverse engineering, reminding us that the past is rarely as primitive as we assume. It is simply a different kind of sophistication, one that operated on timescales and ethical costs we are only now beginning to grasp. If you value this deep dive into the forensic reality of ancient engineering, click subscribe. We are continuing to explore the hidden materials science of the ancient world, one discovery at a time. What other mysteries are simply advanced technologies we have yet to understand? The answers are likely still buried, waiting for our science to catch up. Thank you for watching.